Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Amaka and I am an esthetician. Today we're talking about retinoids. Everything you need to know about retinoids. What retinoids are, types of retinoids, how to use them, side effects, just everything you need to know. And so if you're interested in retinoids generally, this video is for you. Honestly speaking, everything that you possibly need, every information that you possibly may want, would be contained in this video. So what are retinoids? Retinoids are a derivative of vitamin A. Um, it's oil soluble. That's why you see them in a lot of creams, oils, lotions. Although they can be formulated in a manner that will make them stable in toners. But I mean, by and large, most formulations, you see them in oils, creams, and you know, lotions. So they're oil soluble essentially. See here. Retinoids are the OG of skincare ingredients. They are one of the only ingredients that can actually penetrate the lower parts of the epidermis and the dermis and actually work. They have, in fact, they, they have a lot of functions in skincare. A lot. And their functions are not just them say them say. It's not just assumptions. These are things that have been researched on, have been shown to work for decades and decades and decades. As in, it backs a lot of evidence, a lot of research, a lot of clinical studies, a lot of, as in, anecdotal experiences. It's just, it's just, it works. It works, period. Now, the issue would be whether or not you can tolerate it. That's another conversation, but retinoids is not a case of, this is my personal experience is one of the only ingredients that can get in the skin that deep and actually reformat the entire system that is just the best way to describe what retinoids do they get into the skin <laughs> they don't work on the surface level though and that's for moisturizers and the niacinamide no 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 they, 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 they have no business there they go to the basal layer of the epidermis so that's the first layer of the epidermis and start resetting everything they also go to the dermis and restructure everything don't worry yourself we'll get into that i would know we don't really just talk up and down on this channel we explain the whys and the hows so i'll explain everything to you get paper and pen <laughs> it's about to get real <laughs> so yeah um a very fantastic ingredient very very fantastic but then i can understand why it's confusing because there are a lot of names that have been thrown around like you hear things like retinol tretinoin tazerotene adepoline retinaldehyde what are all these things these are different types of retinoids but before we get into the types should we talk about types for functions? Okay, let's talk about types first before functions. But before we get into the functions, um, although retinoids have a lot of functions and a lot of things that they do in our skin, their functions can be categorized or classified into three main functions or three main, or three main roles. Um, Anti-aging or repair of sun-damaged skin, that's one. I'll explain subsequently why I merge these two together um anti-pigmentation so it fights hyperpigmentation and anti-acne these are the three main functions of retinoids so let's keep that one one corner first eh let's talk about the types of retinoid classifications of retinoid retinoids are classified according to their potency do you get like there are different types of retinoids but generally or broadly speaking they are classified based on how potent they are so essentially, for retinoids to work, they have to be in the form of retinoic acid. That is the state in which retinoids, all retinoids have to be for it to work. And how that works is this retinoic acid bind onto something in our skin called retinoic acid receptors. They have to be this binding of retinoic acid to these receptors for it to work. There are different receptors in your skin. I think um, generally there are six receptors. You have R, Z, R, X, R, and R, A, R, and each of them has beta, alpha, and gamma. Honestly speaking, this one is not me and your business. I just know it's more because, you know, I like to deceive myself that I'm a skincare nerd, but you have no business knowing about the receptors. All you need to know is that for it to work, it has to be in the form of retinoic acid because that's the way it can bind to these retinoic acid receptors. Do you understand? So there are certain retinoids that are already in that retinoic acid state. And there are other retinoids that are not in this retinoic acid state, but have to be converted to retinoic acid for it to work. Do you get? 
Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the retinoids that are in the retinoic acid state first. These are the most potent types of retinoids. They don't need any conversion. There are three main retinoids in the retinoic acid state. Tazeretin, um, tretinoin, and adapalene. Now these retinoids obviously are the most effective because they get to work, you know, immediately. But the downside is that retinoids are usually very irritating and these are the most irritating. Do you get? So now, and in this category, the most irritating is tazeretin, followed by tretinoin, then adepalene. Now the next type of retinoid are called retinaldehyde or retinal. So they are the second most potent classification of retinoids. So essentially, they need one step of conversion. When you apply them on your skin, they need to be converted to retinoic acid for it to work. Now, the next type of retinoid, the next group or classification of retinoids are called retinol. That is what you see. It's very popular everywhere. Do you understand? So it is not as potent as retinaldehyde, um, of sim similarly not as irritating as retinaldehyde, but still, you know, still functions, still works, has a lot of research and, you know, science behind it, it still works. Just not as potent as retinaldehyde and definitely not as potent as, you know, straight up retinoic acid. And I'm trying to be wondering, so if retinaldehyde is more potent than retinol, why don't we see retinaldehyde like everywhere? Number one, is expensive. And number two, it is hard to formulate with. Although recently, a lot of products are now carrying retinaldehyde, but retinol is a lot more stable and easier to formulate with. That's why you see it everywhere. And it's cheaper and still effective, but just not as potent as retinaldehyde. And the thing about conversion is, um, it's not straightforward, honestly speaking. It's not straightforward. It's not like when you put it on your skin, it gets converted immediately. There are a lot of factors that can affect conversion. And that is why, you know, that's why people, if you can tolerate a more potent form of retinoid, um, it's advisable to opt for a more potent form because um, retinoids are being converted in your skin by, ex by enzymes. The cell responsible for this con conversion is your um, keratinocytes and your keratinocytes have to be at a particular level of cellular differentiation to be able to do that. There are a lot of complexities, Sha. Also, the type of retinoid, also your skin type. Some people convert retinoid, um, convert, yes, convert retinoids quicker and faster than others. Um, the formulation of the product also is a factor. It's not straightforward. If it was very straightforward, that as you apply retinoid, you, you must convert. It's not straightforward. So, Sometimes, especially as it relates to retinol, you don't know how much of the retinol is being converted. But is it effective? All things being equal, essentially, if um, formulated right, if your skin is behaving well, it would work. Now, the last category of retinoids are things called retinal esters, retinol esters. And, you know, these ones, eh, <laughs> I beg just forget it see if you want a moisturizer that's fine they're formulated with you know fatty acids and um yes the whole idea is they go they get converted to retinol then get converted to retinaldehyde they get converted to retinoic acid before it works see how long that process is it's very long and as i explained the conversion is not even straightforward though there are a lot of things to consider besides that say uh, there are very limited data that shows that they actually do the work of retinoids now the data that are available mainly show it as being effective as an antioxidant unnecessarily performing the functions that a core retinoid should and examples of retinal esters are you know retinal palmitate retinal acetate retinal proponate there is one similarity the eight 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 behind this just know that ah there's a potential of this in being a retinal ester and yeah um so if you just want a moisturizer and you happen to find it there well oh well and good i mean it helps to you know fight free radicals but if you are intentional about incorporating a retinoid in your routine even if they say retinol or whatever and you open check the back there is no retinol or there is no retinaldehyde or there is no um, retinoic acid, all you see are retinal esters 
then please don't waste your money there's one exception there is one exception and they are called grand active retinoids you see them in a lot of the ordinary products grand active retinol in emulsion this that that so yes it is a retinol ester but the manufacturers claim that they don't even need conversion they bind directly to these retinoic acid receptors so essentially the manufacturers are claiming that and i'm using the word claiming intentionally they claim that you know um it is a lot more gentle it is gentler it is more effective than retinol retinaldehyde and every other thing okay that is real bold claims um there's no data backing this up there's no you know clinical research and you know extensive research and findings backing these claims the data available um was sponsored well i don't know if there are subsequent data but to the best of my knowledge the only data available is the one sponsored by estelada and estelada is a part owner of decim which is a company that owns the ordinary which is a company that has a lot of grand active retinoid products so it's not a very it's not a very non-biased findings i mean if i find something and i produce products and i and i claim that the products work based on my findings like who knows how unbiased those findings actually are so we're not saying that these findings were wrong but you're saying that there's not enough data to you know back these claims and this ingredient is really 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 new compared to these other ones that have been existing for years so yes um and but the good thing is that there they have been a lot of anecdotal you know experiences so people have tried them and some people you know have seen positive improvements where whereas some people did not say anything like with any other ingredients some people would like some people wouldn't so if you must pick one if you are confused between gram active retinoids and retinol or retinaldehyde and your issue is you are finding it difficult to tolerate a retinoid a retinoid so you have tried other types of mother retinoids and you cannot tolerate them try the grand active one but if you are just embarking on your retinol journey and you want something that has been tried and trusted and have stood the test of time i will pick retinol over grand active one simply because they're new ingredients and honestly the only data we have is the one provided by people that are manufacturing products products using it so that's just my two cents honestly speaking so yeah um what next what next what next let's see yeah okay i've talked about i've talked about conversion how it's not straightforward as i explained the different factors um the quality of the retinoid the percentage of the retinol that was used your skin type and your skin condition some people convert it um faster than others um the particular state in which the car carotenoid has to be in the differentiation process yeah so essentially i think i've covered up everything concerning the types of retinoid. So essentially, in a nutshell, the closer the retinoid is to retinoic acid, the less conversion it has to make, the more potent it is, and the more irritating it could be. Do you get? The farther it is from retinoic acid and the more conversions that it needs to make, the less irritating it is, and unfortunately, the less potent it is. Does not mean it would not work it will just take longer to get there so let's talk about the functions of retinoid also wait 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 before you go i really say you guys should like and subscribe because i don't want to like be on your neck every day but please subscribe and like as in it takes me a lot to make these videos i have a lot of research to do and your like, your comment, and your subscription would really, really help my channel. Um, yeah, thank you guys once again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.